I don't know about you, but it's been, I'm really filling up already, and we've only had half a day, and I think that's so wonderful. Greetings to all of you. I think we've all been looking forward to this day to all be together, all of us who've known each other for a while, and some new ones who have started coming. So greetings to all of you, Brother Given and Sister June. As I said, this is the time we've all anticipated coming together. He says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to gather together. However, we have a more glorious time coming. In James it says, to be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Consider the farmer. He waits for his crops of corn to flourish. Will you not wait for a crown of glory? If you should be called, though, to wait longer, is there not something more precious to wait for? The theme for next year, Brother Given, what is God doing now? I think he's already doing some of that. And I'm sure he's already beginning to draw a lot of us closer, changing our hearts, and showing us the saving grace of Jesus. I'm sure like the rest of you, you started out with a few notes and you rewrote and rewrote. I was up to 30 minutes, I told Pastor. And I was afraid someone would ring a bell and say, your time is up. Pastor said I only had this much time, but I couldn't measure that in minutes, but I think he was trying to tell me. It made me think when my time is up here on earth, I want to be found ready, I want my oil lamp filled, and I want watch for we know not the day nor the hour where, when the Son of Man cometh. As many of you know, I like hugs, to be honest. This is where I usually get my hugs. However, someday my Heavenly Father will say, Welcome home, sister, and give me a big hug. Can you even think what that's going to be like? Even my own father, who did not like me studying the Bible, um, and many times would get upset and push the Bible away. However, towards the end of his life, he suffered with leukemia, cancer. I got to spend the last two weeks with him in the hospital stayed right in the room with him, continued to read my Bible, and talked to him about the things of the Lord. Three days before he passed away, he went to be with the Lord, and he confirmed that to me, that the Lord was with him. I will receive a big hug from him also, probably for the first time when I get there. This was not an easy task for me to do, because I'm not used to being up like this. But I know what I have to say is coming from the Word of God, which has been the mainstay for me. I listen to the CDs, which is a gift to me, and many times as I listen, I find myself weeping. I hear you, brother, proclaiming the Word of God. Isaiah says, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth, and the word shall not return void. Truth does produce a change in men, which neither rain nor snow can make on the earth. It shall not return to the Lord without producing good effects. It gives me great joy to listen to all of you and know that is how I feel. However, with each rewrite, I found myself growing closer every day to God. I'm thankful for the many resources I have with the banner, thought for the day, the CDs, our Bible studies, Friday night studies. How great it is to have God's word and all this to fill my mind and heart with his truths. In 2 Timothy, he says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. I could share a lot of things um, that had been prior in my life, abuse, ill treatment, but that's not what I want to leave you with. I don't want to leave you with the feeling of being sorry or sad thoughts. I want to share with you my growth in life in Christ, which is a lot of you have been responsible for, so I'm thankful to all of you. You see, I lived in darkness, a sinner who did not proclaim the word of God. I confessed to a man, was given penance for my wrongdoing, and this was a requirement for me then. 
I don't even remember in those years ever mentioning or thinking about going to heaven. I do know we had prayer for purgatory, or lit candles for yourself, or loved ones that had gone on ahead of you. Somehow I'd been attending a Christian women's luncheon when this lady who happened to sit next to me every time I went, she kept inviting me to her church. I'm sure she knew I was in need of a savior. Well, I did go and come to find out she happened to be the pastor's wife. The church in Fort Wayne was Northside Missionary Church, Pastor uh, Frank Armstrong. I heard many things there I'd never heard before. I heard that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Except you be born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. Ye must confess with your mouth that he is the one and only true God. He's not a respecter of persons. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hoping that no one from my other church would see me, always giving excuses, but always making sure I went to confession, I learned the people there were very warm, friendly, and very caring, and they talked many things of God. As time went on, I became more convicted of the messages. However, this did not drive me away. I wanted to hear more. One Sunday, the message was on the crucifixion of Christ. As I began to ponder, this I felt this tug in my heart, I knew then. And praise God, I went forward. I knelt at the altar, surrendered my life to him, and was baptized. They were playing the song, To God Be the Glory, and that is still my favorite song. It took time in my growth all those years. However, staying faithful. But about nine and a half years ago, a pastor came to us, Pastor Dave, and I took a real turn. He brought new things to us. He is a good shepherd. He does have a great concern and care for his flock. And through God's word, he guides and directs to encourage all. I'm glad I'm one of his sheep and not a goat. This has brought me to a deeper walk in the word of the Lord. Isaiah 43 says, I can say now because now I really do know. I have been redeemed, and I am a child of God. I will call thee by name, thou art mine. I can say praise God for that. He brought me out of darkness into the light. I have found the living way, and I desire the living word I found in Jesus. God's favor to his people speaks abundant comfort to all believers. The new creature is of God's forming. All who are redeemed with the blood of his son, he has set apart for himself. Those that have God for them need not fear who or what can be against them. In Luke 8, the parable of the seed tells you a little bit about me. The seed, of course, was the seed that fell on the rock, heard, received it, but not, did nothing with it, and didn't even take root. Therefore, it fell away. The seed that fell among the thorns became choked, caring more about the cares and the riches and pleasures of this life. This brings no fruit to perfection. However, there is the seed planted on the good ground, which is an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keeping it, and bringing forth much fruit. Praise God, I'm a seed that was planted on good ground. I heard the word, kept it in my heart, and became a sprout that grew, blossomed, and ready to burst forth with the word of God. The gifts we have will be continued in us or not as we use them for the glory of God and the good of the brethren. We should desire to hold forth the word of life and to shine going, keep our light shining all around. In, a, in Luke he says, no man when he lighteth a candle hide it under a vessel or under a bed but setteth on a candlestick that all that come in may see that light. Isn't that what we want? When they come into here, don't we want them to see that? We want them to know that there's something so special, not just me or you, but there's something there that they don't have that they want. 
This year he has walked many of us through the waters in different circumstances. It was during this time that myself and my doctor thought I had a stroke. But he said in Isaiah, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Fear not, for I am with, me, with thee. For the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. A lot of times, um, like I said, when I'm listening to the CDs, I do weep because um, I'm, I'm also proclaiming myself some of the things that you are saying. And the same thing with some of the verses that I, I'm reading to you because they become so meaningful to me in the last year. So if I tear up, it's not because I'm nervous, which I am a little, but the Lord has given me the confidence and I'm thankful for that. But I do take serious all the scriptures that he has given to me. Sometimes it's hard to explain to others that he, I knew he was holding my hand. He was holding on to me so tight, even during these circumstances. The comfort he gave to me gave me great peace. Um, when you think about someone holding on to you so tight, it does bring you comfort because they're holding you because they care about you. And I knew that's exactly what he was doing. He not only prevents our fears, but exceeds our hopes. It was a traumatic time. However, to my amazement, his work, his word kept flowing over me. I could just feel it coming to me all the time. True believers are precious in God's sight. His delight is in them above any people. The faithful are always encouraged through his word. I went daily about my work, not as if nothing was wrong. However, I just kept hanging on to my Heavenly Father. You see, He calms the seas and the raging storms of our lives. We just need to let Him. He cannot do the work if we continue to go before Him. Many people hear me singing, off-key usually, or humming. But during this time when I'm in the, this building, I'm communicating with my Lord and Him with me. So I, I get great joy out of singing his songs. The greatest thing for me is that I can know him, just to be able to talk with the Lord, experience his love, be guided by him is wonder enough for me. Psalms 73 says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. To long to know God for God and not for what we want him to do for us is preparation for experiencing experiencing the relationship with him that we were born again to have. Many hear me say when things come up, it isn't, isn't it exciting to see what's around the corner? Betty um, Cobb and I share this many times, and it's true because when you give something to the Lord and then you wait to see what he's going to do, that should be an exciting time for you to see that, how he's going to take care of it, whether it's been in the school in my own personal walk with the Lord, with um, friends or anyone, he does take care if you give it to him. In all situations and circumstances in our lives, he is the true and faithful God always near. Draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. We all love to sing the wonderful songs that have been given to us. Sometimes our songs of praise catch like a bone in our throats and we find it hard to sing. It was during this time in Ezekiel of a songless depression that God raised up Ezekiel with a new song. The song of hope he taught God's people to sing in the strange and foreign land. Ezekiel, he said to him, stand upon thy feet, I will speak unto thee. Ezekiel was obedient and the Lord's Spirit entered into a depleted soul of Ezekiel, then gave him a scroll of the word of God. Listen, the Lord said, do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth. Eat what I am giving you. And isn't that what the Lord does for us? He gets our attention, gives us a challenge for his spirit to sustain us, nourishes us with his guidance as we chew on the word of God for encouragement. 
As you see, he is not only the God of the mountains, he is also the God of the valley. God has reassured us that he is always at our side, even in the valley of the deepest testings. People tend to think God is with us when they enjoy prosperity, yet mistakenly feel he has forsaken them when they are called to suffer affliction. In James, he says, take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. You have heard of the patience of Job, and many here know I like the book of Job. Even today, some of us have spouses that tend to try to turn us away from the Lord. But in Job's case, the Lord proves that he's pitiful and of tender mercy, and we need to serve our God and bear our trials. He will never fail or forsake us. He will always go ahead of us in all things. Moses says, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. What a comfort it is for us to have such an assurance in the storms of life. When all seems to fail, fall apart, how wonderful the eternal God is bearing us up and giving us sustaining grace for the very trial we're in. Joseph was sold by his brothers, yet the everlasting arms of God bore him up into a place of prominence and blessing. Daniel was cast into the lion's den, yet even in that tragic situation, he discovered that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Remember Mark A16, where Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother were working, walking towards the sepulcher cure. I know I'm going to say that wrong, and I've been practicing, but I know I'm going to say it wrong. Um, anyway, this brought a lot of thought to me. As they were walking very early in the morning, they pondered, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? When they arrived, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. We often needlessly concern ourselves over prospective difficulties, which he graciously removes or helps us to overcome when we have to meet them. Let us be encouraged to exercise greater faith in facing possible difficulties on the pathway of duty. When we do turn these difficulties over to him, soon we find our difficulties uh, speedily vanish away. Many a storm comes over us, which never pours rain on us. Many a grief we see before us never comes to cause us pain. Let's not burden our souls with sadness. Let's make a wise and better choice. Let's drink the wine of life with gladness. God doth bid these saints to rejoice. God has gone ahead of the obstacles for us. If he doesn't choose to remove the obstacle, he will help us to endure what may come. Sometimes we go to the mountains to get away from it all. Most of the times the problem is ourselves. Our quiet times with the Lord, though, enables us to return to the valley with a new purpose and power. Oh, that we might learn to walk in confidence each day and never worry about tomorrow. Philippians 4, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We want to thank God for his present provisions. Let us all go forward a step at a time. Remember, God's grace has no limits. God's power is supreme. His wisdom is unbounded, and his provisions are never exhausted. Thank you.